first thing I would suggest is tailoring your resume to the job description. So I think it's actually quite easy to write resumes. You just have to be strategic with it. So if you're going into a certain job, there's likely a few key skills and responsibilities that you'll be doing if you're, again, looking for the same type of job. So I try to tell people to break it down into what are the key six, maybe six to 10 skills and responsibilities that these jobs all kind of have. And then write a bullet point for each. So if the job is requiring you to do data analysis and you have to be a good team player, you have to be good at project management, then take write out all those key skills and responsibilities. And then each bullet point you write out represents and highlights your, your ability to kind of complete one of those responsibilities or shows that you have one of those skills. So that's where I think it can just be a lot easier when you are writing these resumes rather than again changing it each time it's once you're if you're applying for the same type of job it'll likely be the same type of main responsibilities and skills that you can just kind of pick and choose depending on the job but yeah just make sure that you are tailoring it and it's not random points that don't really relate back to the uh to the job so that's really important i also usually do suggest writing a summary at the beginning of at the very top of the resume so why that's important is because it really grabs the attention of whoever's looking at it, of the recruiter, the hiring manager. But usually, you know, when we look at a piece of paper, we look at the top first and then kind of go down. So include a lot of the relevant information at the top of the resume and on the first page. But having that summary is just important because you can get a lot out of that summary um, in terms of who you are, what you're looking for, how many years of experience you have, and it just catches someone's eye. So I always say write that summary so that it really kind of relates back to the job description. You want to pretty much show that you're the perfect person and the perfect candidate. So you want to look at the job description and then write a summary that's really like, I read your summary and I'm like, you're, you're that person. You're the person who's going to do this job really well. Sometimes I see people don't have a summary and I think that's just a really great way to, to showcase who you are, have some, a few bold statements about yourself and catch the recruiter's eye. I completely agree. I mean, I always tailor everything that I send and I think the more you do it the more you get used to it as well because now I kind of know which things I want to tweak I know which things I can add which things I can take out which keywords they they're more likely to, to want to see with a summary I think if you are applying for a full-time job I do agree it's nice to have a summary especially if you don't know the person because you do read it first and it does kind of like you say reflect the whole job description sometimes people want your resume just as like an add-on to a mm -hmm. connection that you already have and just to keep on file and so then you don't really know when it's going to be looked at at what date in the future so I don't tend to put summaries on those ones because mm -hmm. they're more just like records of my experience and yeah. credentials so that if any projects come up like six months or a year down the line they can go oh she knows how to do that Mm -hmm. Just because the summary would be out of date and then I'd have to keep sending them like updated summaries every few months. Yeah, like typically for, for example, for me, I'd put like HR professional with X amount, X years of experience working in um, full, cycle, full cycle human resource management. And then I'll just say like experienced in, you know, project management, like kind of, so it's kind of the same thing. It's keeping it quite mm. vague, but again, showing the X amount of years of experience, what are some of your mm. key kind of skills and capabilities, and hopefully you're going to tailor it to anything that you want in the future as well. I would suggest if someone is maybe looking for different types of roles, have different types of resumes, and then I would just maybe just have like one sheet where I just have like a list of bullet points that I've used, and that's where you can kind of mix and match Mm. and take what you need for a different resume depending on um yeah what kind of what what the person's looking for yeah one thing i do uh, i don't know if you will mention this later or not but um i look at my linkedin profile i kind of have my linkedin profile on one side and my resume on the other side and i pick the bits that are relevant from my linkedin and put them in the resume because yeah i've already got the bullet points and everything written out but there's just so much in there that you know some of it applies and some of it doesn't so mm -hmm. I find uh similar to what you just said you know I can keep recycling the same things but just tailoring them to the individual yeah 
Yeah, exactly. And that's when, once you kind of get, get the groove of it, it becomes a lot easier. It's not this like daunting task. Yeah. So, yeah. I have, I have like probably a hundred resumes in my saved documents file that I always just go through and I'm like, oh, that's a good point. I'll reuse that and put it in my, <laughs> in my next yeah. one. I would say, so again, keep it fairly like one to two pages. A lot of times, and I recently reviewed someone's resume where they just had a lot of re- it was very like redundant information and repetitive. So for example, if you, if you worked at McDonald's and Tim Hortons and you put that both on your resume and then you include a bullet point, like greeted customers under both, that's kind of like, you're repeating the same thing. It's not really necessary. So again, take out some of that repetitive information and really tailor it to, again, each point, each point, like you have all this, well, you actually have a very limited amount of space to have the biggest impact. So don't, you know, don't repeat certain things that you've already mentioned in the past uh, history. And then I like to use the ACE model. So it's action, context, and end result. So on resumes, again, that example of greeted customers, that doesn't really give much insight into to the employer as to okay like how many customers did you greet per day were you actually good at it again you have a limited amount of space to make a big impact so the second thing after not repeating so much information is to use that ace model to really have high impact with all your points so you could say greeted up to 100 customers per shift offering superior experience and then was rewarded employee of the month three months in a row something like that where it's showing what you did the context and then the end result and try to use numbers try to use accomplishments if you did you win any awards if you were promoted if you took on any other responsibilities Um, If you saved the company money, like percentages, dollar signs, that is really what you want to show is that end result and how you, how you had a positive impact for the company. The end result doesn't always have to be like, it can just be, again, you can also use metrics. So let's say you, you worked on 10 projects at a given time. Like you can say that like was able to accomplish or was able to maintain, manage 10 projects at a given time and meet all deadlines and schedules, like something like that. So it doesn't necessarily always have to be a big accomplishment, but it's like, what did, what did you do to make sure that that was successful? 